Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you here this morning. If you are a guest of ours, we want to encourage you to fill out our guest information form. Uh, they're inside the bulletins there. Hope you're able to grab a bulletin when you came in. Uh, but please fill that out for us and uh, rip it out. And you can give it. You can put it in the offering plate, which is up here somewhere, or in the boxes uh, as you leave. That's also if you feel led to give today, you can also put that in the offering plate or in those boxes as you head out. Uh, a few quick announcements for you today. Again, if you are a guest, we do have our little postcards here that a local artist drew of the church. Uh, those are over in our uh, library area, the resource area. And so these are free to you, so please take one of those as a gift from us to you over in that area. In addition, we have a lot of books and Bibles over there, so if you do not own a Bible, please go over there and take a Bible after the service. Uh, we love to give away the Word of God, and so it's over there. In addition, there are a lot of other resources that will help you. If you're, you're not a Christian yet, but you want to learn more, there's resources there. Uh, or if you are a follower of Jesus, but you just need, need some help, something to read, something to study. A lot of resources. And then this week, uh, by Matt Merker, it's called Corporate Worship. And the little tagline here is, How the Church Gathers as God's People. And that's what we're doing this morning. And so, uh, this book is what we recommend to you, of course, this week is kind of our special recommendation. But the, the rest are over there and good as well. But, if you take any books from over there, you made a covenant in blood that you'll read it. Okay, maybe not in blood, but you promise that you will do your best to read that. In addition, if you go over, there's been a little bit of a change this week. Uh, Miss Taylor has been uh, working hard over there, so now we have a little kids section over there, and uh, the, the book that we want to tell you about here is The Biggest Story by Kevin DeYoung, and it is just an overview of the whole Bible, and we're actually going to be using this for Vacation Bible School that's going to be coming up. So that resource is over there. You can see a little cabinet afterwards. It has a, a fishing net over it, and then I believe there's a little treasure chest with some items over there for kids. So again, Taylor's doing a great job. Thank you, Ms. Taylor, for working hard on that. We do have a members meeting directly after the service, so if you're a member, please uh, attend that if you can. Uh, vac Vacation Bible School, like we just said, is coming. We're going to do that most likely in July is what it's looking like. And so uh, if you are able to uh, volunteer for that and serve, uh, please talk to Josh. He will uh, get you lined up. There will be a sign-up sheet coming out, uh, but please talk with him and be willing to do that. Uh, a big thank you for Baccalaureate, all those who helped out, prepared food, served in various ways. It was a joy to, to host, I believe it was the 11 seniors. Um, uh, you know, just to be honest, there, just, there weren't as many people from the community and their families as we'd really like to see. And it was, it was a bit heartbreaking, to be honest with you. But I want to say thank you to those of you members who had time and you were able to come and serve because that made the numbers go up a lot more. And uh, Miss Kathy was sharing with me, Kathy McCain was sharing with me today that uh, it meant a lot to uh, the seniors uh, to put that on for them and to love them well. So thank you guys for everybody who was involved in that. We just praise God for that opportunity. All right, and just the last thing is there's uh, still no, no ladies study or youth for the month of May. Those things will uh, kick off in June. That's all the announcements that I have for you uh, right now. If I can have those who are reading scripture before the service to, to come up before we start. These brothers are going to read uh, one passage out of the Old Testament, one out of the New Testament, and then pray for our time together. So if you're able and willing, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Go ahead, brother. Okay, I'm going to read out of Isaiah 45, 4 through 6. <clears throat> I call you by your name for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen one. I give a name to you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God but me. I will strengthen you, though you do not know me, so that all may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is no one but me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Amen. I'll be reading John 6, 35 through 40. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do, not to do mine own will, but, to do, but the will of my, him that hath sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that 
of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise, should raise them up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you. We're thankful that you sent your Son to come, to live, to die on the cross for us. Father, I ask your blessing on this service. I ask your blessing on Brother Billy as he brings the word through the Holy Spirit to us. And I ask your blessing on each person here. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 What a joy to see what everyone here this morning. And we'll start a worship of our Lord this morning in singing. I think that's a special way that we can worship Him.
scripture memory verse for the month. We'll say reference and verse and then reference and verse. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and salvation, my fortress, and I shall not be shaken. Psalm 62, 5 and 6. Thank you. You can be seated. Scripture verse for the prayer time this morning is going to come from Psalm 145, starting in verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and faithful in all His acts. The Lord is near all who call out to Him, all who call out to Him with integrity. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry for help and saves them. The Lord guards all those who love Him, but He destroys all the wicked. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. Let every living thing bless His holy name forever and ever. Do we have any prayer requests or praises this morning? Yes, ma'am. Prayer requests for a So I have asked for prayers for my daughter Rachel several times. Her husband left her about three years ago, and she's been praying and fasting, praying that he would come back. And uh, he came back this week, and he's living in the house. Uh, and I just said uh, I would like to prayers that he would come to. Yes, I got a call from Willie Watson yesterday, and he asked if we put a very good and very old friend of his on the prayer list. His name is Dan Lindsay. Uh, Willie just found out and had talked to him. He found out that he's got some apparently pretty advanced cancer in the brain and lung and in other places. Uh, they don't know what the treatment may or may not be. I uh, uh, ask that we pray for him and his family and loved ones. While we're at we probably should lift Willie up in prayer. He's, uh, 91 years old now, and uh, we could uh, use some insurance and encouragement. Thank you. Uh, I just want to thank everyone that's been so faithful in prayer for me and my children. Um, I was able to put some seeds down, but had no results. Um, so I just ask that you just keep praying for them. And also a friend of mine, Heather, um, she needs the Lord. Um, she, she, um, she and her boyfriend broke up, but she's kind of in a homeless state right now. I mean, she's got a place right now, so she just needs guidance. And I pray I can be a witness to her and that life will come back together. And, um, she's got a business that kind of broke because part of all her phone calls that 
she got was in on her boyfriend's phone, so she's lost a lot of, a lot of clients that are carrying no longer service and business. So better that um, I can be a witness to her and that God will just drop her heart. Any other? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one of my close friends in Gainesville, um, her name is Corinne. Uh, she's in the hospital with heart failure. So I'm just very supportive. Yes, ma'am. There's a young man named Angelo who was an atheist, has found God, but he's fighting alcohol and he's in rehab. Reached out for prayer. Ms. Ward? Um, Ms. Cindy Lee is not feeling well this morning. Would you please lift her up for prayer? Would you be feeling better soon? Yes, ma'am. Let's all continue to pray for our fundraising, that we can get the money we need for these lots, and that we won't have to go into debt. Any other? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to come into your house and praise and worship you, Lord. Lord, we're thankful that you hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up uh, Miss Vicki and this cancer and the, the testing, Lord. We just pray that you... We know you're sovereign over all these situations, Lord, where people are struggling with illness or cancer, Lord. We just pray that you would work in their lives. And if they're not believers, Lord, that they would come to know you through this, Lord. Lord, we praise you for Sadie doing better. We ask that you continue to be with her. We praise you for the, the Miss Dee Dee's friends and them being able to get together. Lord, we pray that the time they spend together would, uh, would be uh, a blessing to them, Lord, and glorifying to you. Lord, uh, we lift up Rachel's husband who's returned, Lord. We pray that you would continue to be with Rachel, Lord, and that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, draw her husband to you, Lord. Lord, we lift up Dan Lindsay, another dealing with cancer, Lord. We just pray that uh, you would work in this situation, Lord. We know that you're sovereign over it. And just, just give him peace and comfort, Lord. And, uh, we pray for Willie Watson as well. We ask that you just continue to be with him. We're thankful for... Uh, Mr. Doug and uh, Sharon and being with Mr. Willie, we just uh, ask that you continue to be with uh, Willie as he's aging, Lord. Lord, we pray for Miss Alice's, uh, her kids, and that they would come to know you, Lord. We're thankful that she's planted the seed, Lord, and we know that uh, she's done her part, and it's a work of the Spirit now, Lord. Lord, we pray for the same thing for Heather, that she would find you, and we're thankful that Miss Alice is sharing with her. Lord, we lift up Corinne, who's in the hospital with heart failure. Lord, we just ask that you would uh, comfort her during this time, be with her family. 
We lift up Angelo, who's struggling with an alcohol, Lord. We lift up all those who may be struggling with addiction of some sort or trying to quit, Lord. We just pray that you would work in their lives, move in their lives, and help them battle the flesh, Lord. Lord, uh, we lift up Miss Cindy Lee, who's not feeling well today. We just ask that you be with her. Be with Mr. Phillip. He's not feeling well today, Lord. We have, we have others. We just ask that you be with them all. Lord, we lift up Shorty and Kathy to you. Just continue to lead God and direct. Be with them. Lord, I uh, just pray that they do know you, Lord. Lord, we lift up Molly in this cancer that come come in her liver, Lord. We pray that you would just work in her life. Uh, be with her during this time. Be with her family. Lord, I lift up Miss Donna to you. just ask that you be with her and coach as well. Lord, I'm thankful for each and every one here today, Lord. I pray that you would be with us as we try to raise funds for the lots. Lord, uh, we know that you, you will provide. And we're just thankful for our church, our church family, Lord. And I pray for the remainder of this service that you would it would be honoring and glorifying to you, Lord, and that you would be with Pastor Billy as he delivers the message today, Lord, and just prepare our hearts to hear it, Lord, and apply it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As Miss uh, Cindy asked for the prayer request on making a place. So I just want to speak for just a few moments real quick on our fundraiser, Making a Place. We had, uh, Miss Tara was able to help out with some slides here. So uh, go ahead to the next slide real quick. Just want to update you. So what, Making a Place, what's the, the reason? Maybe you have not seen the YouTube video. Or you haven't seen things. You haven't heard of this yet. But it's going to be, of course, for God, for the glory of God, for our church, the community, um, children, youth, missionaries, pastors. There's really this idea that um, we really want to use this all-purpose building for Multiple reasons, multiple purposes. And so, guide, gather, and grow. Go to the next slide. So, all-purpose building. Next slide. Hopefully, it will be a staging facility. Now, this doesn't mean come here and hang out when a hurricane comes through. That's not what we mean. You need to listen to the officials and the authorities and what they say. However, there is a sometimes aftermath stuff, especially, that may be needed. And we have high ground here and could be used as a staging facility. Uh, some of you are stubborn, and when they tell you to leave, you do not leave. And so may come into uh, play there. So all of our facilities, of course, would be open. But uh, we hope to use it for that. Um, to, we are hoping to, to grow with the community. We want this to be, uh, hopefully, a place for an after-school program for kids to come, uh, for them to get help with homework, life skills, um, Bible studies. Um, hopefully it's big enough that we would be able to actually have indoor sports and have things like that for kids here on the island and youth on the island. Um, also, just event space for our church as uh, we've been growing some, so we don't really fit in the fellowship hall, so we could use it for that. Your vacation Bible school, other things. But also for missionaries and pastors who, who need a place to come to recharge. I mean, there's not too many places on this earth that are better than Cedar Key to come and recharge. Amen. And so they could come, and we could have some small events there and encourage them from the scriptures, uh, do some studies, things of that nature. And then just like the other day, we hosted baccalaureate, and I think we're hosting uh, graduation stuff for the seniors after graduation. Again, another space that can be used even in the community. So um, we're currently, I think, and there should be a slide with where we're at as yesterday. So our goal is $250,000. We're currently at fifteen. Five. That's, I think it rounded up, rounded down by like the, the change there. But that's where we're at as of yesterday. And so keep praying. If you can give and you feel led to do so, give. If you can't, just share this stuff and get it out to people who may say, you know what, I like this idea. I think this is something that God will bless. We believe that the Lord is blessing in this way. And so we're stepping out in faith. And so we have about 25 days left as far as raising that money. And that's what we're hoping that the Lord is going to do. So again, please be praying and uh, considering that. Okay? Sound good? Amen. All right, amen. All right, let's go on. Brother Roy. All right, let's stand if it's comfortable. And he is worthy of all glory, all honor, all praise. Oh 
seated. If we have any little ones going to the nursery, you can head out that way now. chapter 8, and uh, Lord willing, we're going to make it from verse 28 through a whopping verse 30. That's right. 28, 29, and 30. And we, part, we covered a little bit of 28 last week, so it's really like two and a half verses that I hope to make it through with you today. When you came in, you should have gotten a handout as well. And you'll notice there are a lot of pages for two and a half verses. Well, you're going to see that there are a lot of verses in here. Folks, this is a glorious passage of Scripture. And it is also a passage of Scripture that really can make us uncomfortable. 
It really can. And so what my, my hope is that, is that you will in some ways be uncomfortable today as we work through this passage. I think that we should at times be uncomfortable with the Word of God because it doesn't quite fully make sense to us. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask that God would help me to communicate this well to you today. And as I pray, I'm going to ask that the Spirit would help you to understand this. And if you're here and you do not know Jesus, I pray that you would see His glory in this passage. And when you would come to faith today, you would cry out to Him for salvation. If you're a follower of Jesus, I pray that your, your love for God and your appreciation for who He is and what He has done for you will just grow. And it will burst out in worship. I am terrified to preach this text and excited to preach this text. So let's pray together and ask for God's help. God of all grace, we do thank you for your word. We're thankful that every letter, every word, every sentence, every paragraph, everything is true because it is from your mouth, your breath. Holy Spirit, how you, how you have moved those throughout the centuries to, to write this word as their words, but yet it's really truly your word, God. And so we're thankful for that. And I'm thankful, Holy Spirit, that I have the opportunity to preach this passage, and I pray that you would help me. I pray for those who are listening, Lord. I, I trust that in your, in your providence, Lord, you've worked in their lives in such a way that they chose to come here today and Lord, I'm trusting that you have a word for them today from this text. Help all of us now. Give us clarity of thought. Please take away distraction. Help us to track through this passage. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I'm calling this sermon, borrowing some of this from others, the glorious golden chain. Here's your golden chain. Five links in this golden chain. Last week, we were able to work through a, a, a portion of Romans chapter 8. If you're new here, we like to work through verses uh, uh, through the text verse by verse. So let me say a few things first. With, with Romans chapter 8 overall, we've seen that it began with there's no condemnation, and it ends that there's no separation from us in Christ. No condemnation, and the chapter ends with no separation. We as Christians are sealed by the Holy Spirit, and we're to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. Because the same Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, also known as the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us, we know that God gives us life now and will raise our bodies from the grave eternally. Amen. We have the spirit of adoption and we get to call God Father or Daddy, if you will. He also said, we also saw in this passage, that we will suffer with Christ in this life, but this gives us great confidence that we will be glorified with Christ in the life to come. Paul told us then that suffering that we face now is nothing in comparison to the coming glory. We saw that creation itself is groaning for things to be made right. We groan that things will be made right. The Spirit groans inside of us and, and prays for us, and we don't even know what to pray. And we end it with, God works all things for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. Verse 28. And that's a, that's a pretty encouraging verse right there. Let me read it again. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. All things work together for your good. Is that encouraging? Every single thing that happens to you, He's working it for your good. But... That truth and the rest of this truth is linked to what we're going to study today. You don't get verse 28 without this. You have to have this. And guess what? After verse 30, a beautiful passage, which I may read today, I may not. I have no idea where this thing is going. But this is the link between the two. All of chapter 8, verse 28, 31 and beyond, you need this glorious golden chain.
That's the only way this book makes sense is with these couple of verses we're going to study today. So let me start with, I have a picture for you. For those of you who love math, I think Ms. Susan will be able to pull it. There you go. There you go. One of the hardest math problems in the world. Anyone want to take a crack at it? <laughs> Some of you are like, I can't even see it. I was... Scribble, scribble, minus plus, scribble, letters. I don't understand that. I don't understand it. There's a lot of things I don't understand. A lot of things I, I don't understand about my, my wife. But she's beautiful. She's here. I love her. There's things I don't understand about math. There's things I don't understand about science. There's things I don't understand all around this world. There's things that you don't understand. But can I tell you something? Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not true. Just because we don't understand things, it doesn't mean it's not true. And in fact, when it relates to God, it's really good that we don't understand Him completely. Think about, would you like to worship a God that you understood completely? Kind of a small God. We do not understand God completely. We do not understand salvation completely. There is a mystery when it comes to God. I am going to be reading through a lot of verses today. I need you to follow along. They might be on the screen. Again, Miss Susan's fingers might be smoking over there. Or the machine might be smoking as we go through. That's why you have the handout. That's why we're going to go through this quickly. You need to be okay with a mystery in your theology. Here's what you can't do, folks. You cannot put God into a box. You can't say, this is who God is, and then I'm going to read Bible verses and make Him fit in my box. You cannot do that. He's a mystery. We get to understand some about Him, but we do not understand everything about Him. And brothers and sisters, you need to be okay with that. God is a mystery. Let me read a few verses for you. Romans 11, 33-35. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and how inscrutable His ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been His counselor or who has given a gift to Him that He might be repaid? What's Paul saying here? God is so far beyond our understanding and needs nothing from us. Psalm 147 4 and 5. He, God, determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Whoa. Think about that. I forget my children's names sometimes. <laughs> number four. Come on. <laughs> Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts, Lord, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You need to be okay with that. You need to say, God, I, 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 there's things I don't understand. It doesn't mean we give up. It doesn't mean we don't read the Scriptures. He has revealed Himself to us, and He continues to reveal more and more of Himself to us as our minds are renewed and the Spirit works inside of us. But you need to understand, you will not understand Him completely. Job 26, 1-14. Then Job answered and said, How have you helped Him who has no power? How have you saved the arm that has no strength. How you have counseled him who has no wisdom and plentiful declared, plentifully declared sound knowledge. With whose help have you uttered words and whose breath has come out from you? The dead tremble under the waters in their inhabitants. Sheol is naked before God. Sheol is the place of the dead. Abaddon has no covering. He stretches out the north over the void and hangs the earth on nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not split open under them. He covers the face of the full moon and spreads over it his cloud. He has inscribed a circle on the face of the waters at the boundary between light and darkness. The pillars of heaven, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astounded at his rebuke. 
By his power he stilled the sea. By his understanding he shattered Rahab. By his wind the heavens were made fair. His hand pierced the fleeing serpent. Behold, these are but the outskirts of his ways. And how small a whisper do we hear of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? That's your God, folks. Wow. Next I want to talk, so there's a mystery with who God is. But I want to talk for a second about omniscience. Big word here, means God knows everything. Some of you are like, oh, omniscient, yeah. Some of you, some of you husbands, some of you wives are like, I know everything. No, you don't. Just so you know, you don't. This is very important to understand that your God doesn't learn anything. He's outside of time. So everything for him is it's kind of like just a snapshot. Everything, all at once. Doesn't learn. I need you to understand. Let me give you some verses about this. I want you to take my word for this. Isaiah 46, 8 through 10. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring, check this out. The end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purposes. He knows the beginning from the end. You don't, I don't, he does, period. Job 37, 14 through 16. Hear this, O Job. Stop and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know how God lays his command upon them and causes the lightning of his cloud to shine? Do you know the balancing of the clouds? The wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge. Perfect in knowledge. 1 John 3, 19 through 20. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and he knows a couple of things. Oh, sorry. He knows everything. Revelation 1, 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. There's nothing else there, folks. That's everything. He's over everything. He's the first and last. Psalm 139, 16 through 18. Your eyes, the psalmist speaking, your eyes saw my unformed substance, and your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me. And God's book, every single day, was written. When as yet there was none of them. Before you even started, all your days were written in His book. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Psalm 90, verse 1 and 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever you have formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You know how far long everlasting is? Get it? Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 93, 1 and 2. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Job 21, 22. Will any teach God knowledge? See that He judges those who are on high. I think that's a good start there. I hope you can understand from those passages that your God is everlasting. Your God knows everything perfectly all at once. There's nothing that he does not know. All that plays into this passage. You have to believe that to understand this passage. Let me read through the passage now and we'll work through it verse by verse. I'm just going to read starting in 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be made firstborn among many brothers. And those whom He predestined 
he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. <clears throat> Your five links in the chain. Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Those he predestined, he called. Those whom he called, he justified. Those whom he justified, he glorified. This is your golden chain. In verse 28, those who love God are called according to his purposes. Those are the things, those are the ones that God works everything out. And that is only true because of verses 29 and 30. When we see this word called here, this is an effectual calling. It has an effect. God calls and we respond. We love because he first loved us. So let's break down 29 and 30 word by word here the best we can to see what it says. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. I want to take the four new word first. You have two options with this word. Here are the two options. Now what happened was, let me explain this to you, this is not a recent debate that just came around. All the way back in the 4th and 5th century, there was a, a guy named Augustine, or Augustine. You ever heard of him? If you're from Florida, yeah, I know St. Augustine. Right. <laughs> He said some things about God that basically God's in control of everything and knows everything. Well, another guy named Pelagius said, whoa, 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 I don't like that. And so they began to debate one another back and forth. What happens was Pelagius said, well, our salvation and everything in it, it's really, really contingent on us. And Augustine said, it's contingent on God. And they debated, and eventually Pelagius was put out of the church overall as a heretic. But then, something else came out of that called semi-Pelagianism. Semi-Pelagianism. So here's what you have when it comes to this idea of foreknowledge, folks. It's to know beforehand. You can't twist it. It's what it means. When we see words in Scripture, we don't need to run away from them. We need to embrace them and ask God to help us to understand them. So it means to know beforehand. So here's your options. Here's what one group will tell you. One group will say this. To know beforehand means that those that are being talked about here, God saw in time that they would choose him. So outside of time, he looks at throughout history and he says, okay, I see that you're going to choose me, so I'm going to choose you. You see that? I see that you're going to choose me, so I'm going to choose you. That's the one group, the semi-Pelagians. The other group would say that this word knew here, these are the, those that God knew in an intimate way, a personal way. Some theologians would say you could insert the word love. A couple of verses for you to where they get this from. First, this idea of knew here. Genesis 4.1, now actually this word's used over and over again, talking about here, when Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore a son. That word knew there is to know very intimately. Genesis 18, 6, 16 through 19, listen to what it says here. Then the men set out from there, and they looked down toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them and set them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have chosen him, or knew him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring Abraham what he has promised. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken to you, O people of Israel, against the whole family that I have brought out of the land of Egypt. You, listen carefully, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. See that? Does God know all the families of the earth? Does he know them? In one sense, yes, of course he does. He knows everything. He's saying in a specific way, I know Israel in a specific way. 
Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Never knew them intimately. Here's your two options, folks, with this passage. Either one, when it's talking about those whom God foreknew, it either means that he looked down history and learned that you would choose him, so he chose you. That's one group, which I'm going to tell you I'm not a part of that group. I don't think God learns anything. I don't think he responds to us in that way. However, there are good Bible teachers who love Jesus, and that's what they would hold to. You can hold to that. I think you're missing it, though. I think there's something gorgeous that's in this that I'll show you. The other side is that God knew you in eternity past in an intimate way. That he set his affections on you in an intimate way. He didn't learn that. He foreknew you. That's your two options, okay? I'm trying to give you both options here. So now we have this first link is this foreknew. So what happens to those who foreknew? These are your two options. Either he did it by looking or he just always knew it. Okay, here we go. But now what happens after that? For those he foreknew, he also predestined. Again, that word, how many of you just start to go, I don't like that word. Predetermined. You can't change the word, folks. It's what's in the Bible. It's here and it's other places. Don't believe me? 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 9. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom. Although it is not wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed, same word here in the Greek, predestined before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood it, understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You don't like that one? Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, guess how long ago the foundations of the world were? The beginning. This is before that, okay? Don't miss that. It's before that. That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us with in the beloved. I'm going to leave Acts 4 for you to read on your own. So God, what Paul named, predestined, predetermined, either, here's where you have, you get your foreknowledge, it's your two options here, either based upon what he saw or what he decided to do to conform you to the image of Jesus. Long before you ever existed, he decided to do that. Those who he either saw, if you're in this camp, down history. This camp, he decided, those he foreknew, he predestined to work. Now, what does he happen there? According to the text. Those he predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. What are you predestined to? To be conformed to Jesus. In order that he might be the firstborn of many brothers. That way Jesus would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. That's the plan. And those whom he predestined. So now I got the, our links here, right? Four new, predestined. Next link. For those whom he, and those whom he predestined, he also called. I have on your notes here, I stated about this is a specific special calling of, those, of God that he gave to those. Called them to respond to the gospel. If you're a follower of Jesus, you responded to the gospel. Don't check out on me, folks. I know this is a lot. Don't check out yet and don't think for a second that there's no choice still. Don't get there. Wait. I know your head should have already exploded by now, but listen, give me a few more minutes. He calls. He calls. Next link, those who he calls. He justifies. Is everyone justified before God? No, right? But, but if it's linked to the, the calling and the predestination and the foreknowing, then they have to stay together. You can't say, well, this call was for everybody. If it was for everybody right there, then they would have been justified. 
They're not justified. This is different. This is, a, this is a way in that God is showing us something different. This doesn't mean that you do not have a choice to respond to the gospel. You have to respond to the gospel. It is your choice. But folks, these are two things that we do not understand, kind of like that math problem. And how to fold fitted sheets. We don't understand some things. But as Charles Spurgeon would say, these things are not enemies of one another. Choice and the sovereignty of God are not enemies of one another. They're a match made in heaven. I don't understand it all, but I'm not going to change what I see in the Bible to try to fit it. This is what God is doing. And it's a point to all of where this is going. He foreknows. He predestines. He calls. He justifies. Now look at what it says next. And those whom he justified, he also, what does it say? Glorified. glorified. Remember we talk about glorification? That's something that's coming, right? What does it say here? It's already happened. The Apostle Paul here is writing and saying, this thing is so certain that he talks about it in a completed way. Now how does that fit in? Why does this even matter? Why does this even matter, Paul? What, does it, what difference does it make? It's in the Scriptures that matters. What's the context that we've been working through, folks? These are people who are doubting, perhaps, God's love for them. This is an evangelism passage, folks. This is a passage to give you assurance as a believer. Amen. That's what this passage is about. These people are facing persecution. Remember, they're, they're, all these bad things are happening. God says, I'm going to work all these things for your good. How do you do that, God? How do you do that? Because I've been working on the plan since before anything started. I've had the plan since eternity past. I wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life before anything was ever even written, ever even spoken. He says, how do you, how do you know that I'm going to work everything for your good? How do you know that I'm going to care for you? How do you know that no one can ever condemn you? That you can never be separated from God? How do you know? Because if you've believed in Christ, you are glorified. That's connected to you because you are justified. That's because God called you. It's because he predestined you. It's because he knew you long before you ever even existed. So you should not fear and should not doubt. Amen. Does it make sense? It's hard. I get it. It's hard. But God's knowledge is perfect. And I'm going to say that again, there are good brothers and sisters who would, who would hold to this idea that God looked down and saw that you were... Th Here's what I'm going to say to you. You need to wrestle with this passage. And you need to see that there was nothing good in you, but God's just grace toward you. That's grace. Amen. Well, why, do, why do I believe God? He loves you. What else do you want? He loves you. He loves you for all of eternity. And you will not be lost by Him. On the bottom of your notes here, I just want to show you that I put in red. You have this chain. Our foreknown, predestined, called, justified, glorified. You see the red there? At that moment where we're called, you have to respond in real faith. You're not a robot. You actually have to respond in real faith. Then we're justified and then sanctification takes place. But notice Paul doesn't even mention sanctification here. Why? His focus is on that what God is doing everything. That's his focus so that way you would rest. How is he going to work all things together for good? For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Here's where we're going to end. Listen to what you get because of the link of the chain. Look where the chain ties to. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Like, if eternity past, God has a plan for you? He's like, you're mine? What's going to happen to you? No one can do anything to you. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will we not also give him, with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? There's no condemnation. Pastor Matt Chandler talked about this, saying, He owns everything. How could you be condemned? You can't be. He says you're guilty. You're guilty. You're not guilty. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who is he interceding for? All of you. All of you. Now watch this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Nobody did. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, viruses, political state, nakedness, danger, or even the sword, even death, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be to the slaughter. Here's what I read to those who are about to die. Those who I go to visit in the hospital beds and in their homes, I read this passage to them because this is a passage of assurance. Because of this chain right here, because of God's work, here's what I can say to them and to all of you. Here's where we're ending. Can anything separate us? Verse 37. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. It's because of what he's done. He is so gracious to us. But here's the thing. If you're here, you have to respond to the gospel. Believe the gospel. Cry out to God for salvation. And folks, we've got to continue to take the gospel to the ends of the earth so people can hear this message. I'll say this on the back of your notes there. I wanted to put on there a whole bunch of Baptists in particular, but people throughout church history that would affirm this side of the interpretation like I was telling you. Some of you have been, I would argue, maybe lied to or confused by what the Bible says about certain things. You need to study and study and study and wrestle and realize I'm not going to understand it all. And this is, there's a mystery that's going on here. But anyone who lands that God is not sovereign or doesn't know everything, they're wrong. And anybody who lands that we do not have a responsibility to respond to the gospel call with our choice, they're wrong as well. Both are true. And they are a beautiful marriage. They are not enemies of one another, even if we cannot understand it. Let's pray together. Father, I ask that you would bless your word. I pray that you would use it to strengthen your children. That we're adopted into your family because of Jesus. You've given us your spirit to live inside of us, to seal us forever. Not because of how great we are. We knew something that somebody else didn't, but that you have loved us from eternity past. And you in eternity past made a covenant with the Son and the Spirit, and you gave us to the Son. And the Son says, he will not lose one. God, as we respond with taking the supper now, I pray it would be a time of worship. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here. For those who are here who do not know you, I pray they would cry out now for salvation, believing in Jesus' death and their place for their sins. After three days, he rose, defeating sin, Satan, and death for our justification. Lord, you sent your son to do that for us because you love us. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. If I can have the men serving come forward, please. They're going to start passing it out right away for you here. And as they're passing out the bread here, go ahead and take time and ask God to search your heart to make sure you don't have any sin in your life. Unrepentant sin that you need to confess to God. Maybe if you have somebody in here that you have an issue with, you may need to go to them. Go ahead and do that. Take some time now to pass this out.
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. All right, as they pass out the cup, if you feel led to do so, read scripture of the congregation. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, and through him be reconciled to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Thank you, brother. everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, or you la or your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich foods. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for you. Thank you, sister. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I invite you to go ahead and stand. We're actually going to do just uh, the doxology one time through as a song of response now. So go ahead and stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. said before, if you feel led to give or if you have your guest information cards, please put those in the boxes by the door or the offering plate up front here. Uh, before you go, uh, 
Brother Doug has a blessing for you, and if you're a member, we do have our uh, meeting right after this ne- uh, next door. Go ahead, brother. I want to read to you from 1 Thessalonians from chapter 3. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May He strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with His holy ones. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.